copy of the Joe Biden podcast. And it goes, of course, some of you guys will know I'm a huge fan of the podcast. Or I was a huge fan of the podcast. I still think it will go down in the podcasting hall of fame, if ever that was a thing, maybe in the future. Um, it provided me with many, many hours of entertainment, especially when I was working in some shitty jobs where I didn't really like where I was at. To be able to put your headphones in and kind of be transported into a different world with people that you felt like were your friends. You developed this weird parasocial relationship with them. You kind of you laughed at all their little inside jokes, their mannerisms, all that cool stuff. They had some really cool commentary when it comes to talking about music industry and culture and just you know stuff in general um it really was again one of my kind of go-to places to listen to a podcast especially considering the length right they usually did anywhere between two to three hours so it kind of covered loads of chunks of time two times per week with the addition of patreon stuff towards the end but you know as with all kind of great stuff it sometimes it comes to an end and unfortunately with this um podcast when it comes to dropping a podcast it was like um it was it was avoidable the end was definitely avoidable i feel like joe Biden definitely got a bit too big for his breaches as i say here in the uk he's like feeling himself a bit too much and for whatever reason um the question about accounting the question about auditing from his other two co-hosts in terms of rory and mal it did something to him it set him off some way and it went off in a way where it never kind of was able to come back from um again there's many more details involved in the story but overall that's basically what led to the kind of demise of the podcast the two other guys asked for the accounting they were kind of you know a little bit disillusioned with how the podcast was going maybe worried about the money maybe concerned about the deals that maybe got fumbled the fact that they weren't on spotify anymore i don't know something changed they asked questions and you'd imagine as a leader as somebody that's meant to be in charge as a boss because i think again joe kind of did a lot of performative things after the fact in terms of reminding everybody he was in charge my name is on the flipping you know on the cover this is my show i'm the main guy without me this thing all that sort of stuff cool let's say you are the main guy but if you are the main guy you should recognize why your show is successful your show isn't successful because of you it's successful because of the dynamic with all of them together parks mal rory Ian sometimes chiming in, Savon in the background, Scream Man, all those guys contributed to it. And for whatever reason, he didn't think they were that, they, he, did, he didn't basically value their contribution or didn't think they would, they justify the level of questioning that they were asking. Whatever his point of view is, I don't agree, but I guess that's basically where he was coming from, which basically what made him kind of get angry at them also for asking questions. Um, but I still think there should be a part of you as a leader where you'd be like, you know what? let me alleviate my employees fears and basically try and provide as much information as i can to them so that they can know that i'm not trying to fleece them right i'm not trying to be a dickhead whatever just do something to kind of keep them on board because you feel as if they're you know they're important to the show that didn't happen they end up falling out a couple of strikes happen he replaces them with some other guys ice and Mo, sorry ice and ish who are doing a reasonably okay job but again i don't listen to the show anymore mostly out of i won't say principle but mostly out of kind of i would say um I, yeah i kind of feel like maybe as a fan i got lied to maybe that's why i don't listen to it because joe sold us this one idea that he was this kind of um he was this ambassador but he was the kind of guy that was fighting the fight for the creator right and he obviously because of his terrible reputation in the industry he was sort of like the underdog people that everyone sort of counted out and i guess we all kind of saw ourselves in him the fact that he was such a fuck up in some respects right we all kind of have versions of we probably have various levels of fuck up in us or maybe we have aspects of his personality that we kind of relate to or see us see us see in ourselves so maybe with myself i kind of saw it as a betrayal because it felt like you sold yourself as this one guy and in the moment it came to kind of holding your guys down or holding your, your your team down or doing everything that you basically speak out against that the industry does to people you did the exact same thing the industry does because what he did was exactly what spotify would have done to them what a big oven production network would have done to them what a label whatever right that's what it felt like it felt like the, the, he turned into the man quote unquote or the industry or the culture of culture, whatever the the kind of boogeyman or the candy man is called when it comes to that scene and i just think since then i've just never kind of recovered from that kind of uh the betrayal and every time i hear his voice it just annoys me right i just kind of turn it off it just just pisses me off the entire thing so even though the show from what i've seen in clips with ice and Mo, sorry ice and ish is still good i guess it's listenable it's not what the it's nothing close to the magic that they had previously and i guess you could even say the same for the royal mall show the royal mall show is okay i listen to it here and there but again this, the magic that they had 
with all three of them or four or five with a supporting cast you just can't replicate it with them kind of not 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 together that's why they were they were stronger when they were together but for every reason joe didn't agree with that cool but the main crux of it it feels like what's a spotify issue they were one if i'm not mistaken joe joe biden podcast was one of the first sort of like podcasts they signed up on spotify and if i'm not mistaken also the other part of it too i forgot which comedian it was maybe it was um i forgot her name but there was another comedian who they signed up at the same time so they had like a slew of podcasts they signed and i think the comedian podcast the female comedian she was kind of the marquee name that they had in all the articles on variety and stuff and the joe biden podcast was something that he kind of mentioned after the fact so what made it sweeter for fans and for Joe Budden like is that we were able to kind of collectively kind of, you know, tell all our friends, you know, share the show around. They always obviously did some good marketing bits and pieces, interviewed some cool guests, had some very great viral moments out of that show. But over a short period of time, they were able to basically, you know, eclipse everybody that the Spotify basically thought was going to be the number one and turn into be the number one listen show out of those shows that they signed. So clearly there was a good relationship in the beginning, right? Because they obviously were doing well, those kind of platforms, they'd want, if they're doing well, they want to reward you. But I don't know what happened between then and the end, but something changed. They ended up kind of falling out. Joe Budden ended up doing what he always does and eviscerate Spotify live on air. You know, they all said some very disparaging things about the streaming platform, to be honest. Even Rory and Mal, they also got involved because I guess they felt a bit aggrieved because, again, maybe they didn't have the information, but whatever. But Spotify was a big part of the story of the Joe Banner podcast and why it kind of went awry and kind of fell off the face of the earth. And then, of course, in protest, when they kind of weren't getting paid anymore from Spotify, they decided to obviously jump off the platform and take it, the podcast exclusively onto um, Apple, Google Play, I think YouTube and then Patreon, but it wasn't available on Spotify for a long period of time, which made sense. Again, you're getting paid for it, cool. But it was a bit, it was a standard he took, like a moral, ethical sort of stand, right? We're going to do this because we feel like we're getting shitted on, they're not treating us right, cool. But then suddenly, they're now on Spotify, all of a sudden, and mostly they're on there because of Joe's fuck ups, right? Joe got involved in that sexual assault kind of harassment case with um, Olivia Dope, an ex host of See the Thing Is podcast with Bridget and Mandy. Um, that obviously then le led to them losing the sponsorship they had with Square, because it's Square Cash, no Cash App, sorry, right? It's Cash App. Um, and of course, that I guess was uh, being able to hold them down and pay a lot of people's salaries. Um, the Patreon money obviously can't cover everything. The YouTube money probably can't cover everything because not all their videos, I'm assuming, probably get monetized or not fully monetized. I know some of mine don't, and I don't talk as much as I don't talk about as many racist topics as they do. So obviously, the only natural thing that they had to do was obviously come back onto Spotify because they needed to be able to have a place where they can demonstrate that they have the numbers, listeners, um, you know, in order to kind of leverage that opportunity to get other deals in other places. And obviously if you don't if you're not available on Spotify, it kind of limits the amount of marketing advertising ability that you have for other things. So business wise it makes sense, but I think if you did all that rah 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 about being on Spotify and you basically found out your friends about it, jumping back on it again and then kind of using it as a chance to kind of giggle and laugh and make it seem like it was all a joke is a little bit disingenuous and again just shows how kind of detached I feel like the the people that do the show are from the actual fans that listen to it. They don't necessarily, I think they probably don't care, fair enough, but it just feels like they're completely different people than what we kind of started out listening to them being. And I guess it makes sense because I guess most content creators, when you follow them over a period of years, they start off being one thing like they're dusty they're just figuring it out and then as time progresses and they get more after they become more successful they become more affluent maybe they start feeling themselves a bit more they let the success and the variety and deadline articles get to their head and then suddenly they turn into the person they always hated i don't know who knows but let's play a quick clip of joe budden and co explaining why they're back on spotify some of the people want me to explain why we uploaded to Spotify last podcast. Oh, did we? I didn't oh, even we know did. we did. That. I didn't even know that. We did. No, it's up. Oh, all oh. right. Typical, isn't it, right? Typical Joe Biden podcast experience. None of the people that work on the show knew the show was back on Spotify. Even though they're all getting paid for it, even though they're all claiming a salary or collecting a salary, sorry, from the Joe Biden podcast. And it's their business to know, even though Joe will tell you it's not. They all didn't know it was on back on Spotify. <laughs> I guess in some respect, he'll say it doesn't bob. It's not their business because it doesn't affect their money. But just nothing changes in it, really. Nothing changes. Because <laughs> you want to tell them? <laughs> because we wanted to. Because we can. <laughs> 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 can do that. Imagine Parks jump chiming in like that. You know what's interesting too? The Parks, the Parks sort of um, 
again, I kept saying his name like Mal did, uh, his decline or the reputational damage that he suffered off the back of that breakup is just something not a lot of people could have either write in it. You could never predict it. You understand if he suffered the reputational damage because he maybe fell out with Mal or fell out with Rory in the argument and he picked a side. But just because of his capping and his sucking off of Joe Budden and the fact that he clearly loves Joe more than anybody else in that team because obviously he's probably known him more in terms of their work they've done together in his music career. But the just the um, unapologetic capping that he did for Joe Budden, the getting on his knees and just sloshing him off, it's just gross, isn't it, to see another man do this. It's like, especially considering Joe's track record of fucking people over. It's not as if Puck is not aware of it. He just chooses to accept it, basically, and not basically complain because I guess he's getting paid and I don't care, as you said famously, right? I don't care. I'm getting paid. What a tosser. Yeah. Welcome to independence. You can do what the fuck you want. Yeah, not, you're not used to that. They're used to being told what they have to do. Right. It's a little different. I thought that was like the obvious answer, but I'm a dick. <laughs> And I'm trying to not be a dick. I'm trying to be less of a dick heading into 42. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Well, I'm either trying to be less of a dick or I'm certainly trying to clear all the people away from me that thought I was too much of a dick. Reasonable. Listen. <laughs> no weirdness. <laughs> cool. I'm, I'm logical. If I'm a dick, then go away. That's logical. Take that. <laughs> some, some of them did. Um, yeah, they did. That's a good, that's a good little, little jibe at the end. Um... It's an interesting way to approach content generation isn't it? or to approach being a content creator and to approach your fan base, isn't it? Like he purposely antagonizes them. Like he purposely keeps pushing their buttons, I guess in an effort to maybe clear the dance floor. I guess one, again, one fucking donut of a guy that I grew up with basically said that a lot about, oh, he goes into raves and when he's doing a DJ set, he likes to clear the dance floor as a way to kind of gloat and kind of brag that he's had control of the night, right? This is my night. I'm playing the music. So in an effort to kind of dictate what the terms are on the dance floor and you don't tell me what to play, he would purposely play like stuff that people wouldn't like or stuff that only that he would like that's going to be divisive, maybe R&B, maybe jazz, whatever it is. And then that would clear the dance floor and then he can then start playing the stuff that he thinks people would like. It's like, why are you punishing people for coming out and having a good time? Same thing happens to Joe Budden when it comes to the podcast. It's like, we are fans. Some people, again, like myself, I was I didn't even like the guy before he did the podcast. I thought he was a bit of a prick. Then the podcast comes out and I think, oh, this guy's pretty decent, right? He wins me over his personality because I get to hear more of him. But then over time, you get to understand why people in the industry had whatever they had to say about the guy, why he was, you know, whatever, how he was perceived in the industry. And he seems like he continues, just keeps poking the bear, like just keeps teasing them. And again, maybe most of it has to do with Rory and Mal more so, and less to do with the fans. Maybe there's still some unaddressed things they need to deal with, but I just don't get the antagonizing and the kind of probing and picking at the fans that way. It just seems odd, especially for people that were legitimately on the journey for you from the beginning. Like I was there from when it was, you know, I'll name this podcast later. Do you know what I mean? I was there from the very start all the way until obviously it's in, you know, it's recent end. And now it's since everyone's kind of gone their separate ways and stuff, but it's just a bizarre way to treat content generation. I've never seen someone do it. I remember even when the breakup happened, Joe was purposely antagonizing people going on Twitter and retweeting things and saying, yeah, I'm done. I don't care if you leave. Like just being a dick. Like it's just, I didn't get it. It was just like, interesting. like wow, what an interesting way to approach content. Like, you've never seen that where somebody, where your fans are telling you you're being an arsehole and you're like, yeah, I am. And what? Like, are you going to stay or are you going to leave? Like it's like, huh, interesting. But I guess, you know, people stayed, but it hasn't really worked out in general because, you know, look what's happened. They've lost deals, they've lost sponsorship, or maybe they don't have any sponsorship, maybe they're not getting, I don't really know. They've had to jump back on Spotify and make it seem like it's not an L when it clearly is. Um, I guess you could argue, oh, we were always going to come back on there anyway. We always kept the door open, but the way they spoke about Spotify, the way they spoke about the people that worked there, the way they made it seem like it was a racial issue, like, you know, they tried to slightly just smollett the story. They tried to slightly just smollett it, try slightly, tried to make it seem like, you know, they weren't getting the deal because they were black and it was a, oh, come on, man, come on. And then now you want to get back on there and make it seem like it's just a, oh yeah, because we're independent, like, absolute, you know, you know, you know what I'm saying, man, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> 